Hi, I'm Mark Raven, author of the book, Measures of Success, React Less, Lead Better, Improve More. And here I wanna share an article that I wrote on some of these themes back in March, 2017. I published it on LinkedIn. It's titled, Your Lean Daily Management Approach Would Be Even Better with some simple statistical methods. So I'm gonna share that article with you here. I'm gonna scroll through it, show you the visuals. I hope you enjoy it, I hope it's helpful. And to learn more about my book or to buy it, you can go to www.measuresofsuccessbook.com. Thanks. Okay, so here's the article over on LinkedIn. Your lean daily management approach would be even better with some simple statistical methods. And I did edit the post here in 2018 to include mention of the book. But here's the article. For a long time, many of us have taught that lean is more than a set of tools, more than Kaizen events and projects. As Toyota teaches today through its TSSC group, the Toyota production system and lean are an organizational culture, a philosophy, a managerial method, and a set of technical methods. It's a system. In recent years, it's certainly been encouraging to see more organizations learning and practicing lean as a management system. What's often described as lean daily management or managing for daily improvement or MDI typically improve, includes practices like team huddles, formal gemba walks, and boards on the wall that display performance metrics and improvement ideas that are initiated and worked on by staff and frontline supervisors. One concern I have about lean daily management is the way some businesses and healthcare organizations view and react to the charts on the wall whether in the boardroom, the shop floor, or the operating room hallway. Some very common practices out there violate known best practices for statistical analysis, which can lead to a lot of frustration and wasted time while hampering needed improvement efforts. I've written before on LinkedIn about how the book that's had the biggest impact on me is Understanding Variation, The Key to Managing Chaos by Professor Donald J. Wheeler from Tennessee, you know, my Apologies to LEI and its great authors. I, I like their books too. But the methods I write about here are something I included even just briefly in the first edition of my book, Lean Hospitals, and each edition since. Well, Dr. Wheeler worked directly with the late great Dr. W. Edwards Deming for 20 years and still carries forth his message today. If you wonder why Deming should still be relevant to the lean community, remember Shoichiro Toyota's words. There's not a day I don't think about what Dr. Deming meant to us. Deming is the core of our management. Well, in early 2017, I saw Dr. Wheeler give a keynote talk at the Society for Health Systems Conference and was reminded through his wisdom and humor of some of the important lessons from his book, which I've read countless times over the past 20 years. Wheeler teaches several important concepts that should be incorporated into lean daily management, such as no data have meaning apart from their context. I once saw a hospital put up in their lobby that their quote unquote quality panel score year to date was 3.58. Well, there was no context about what the maximum score was, what the scores were in previous years or how that score compared to other hospitals. The only other piece of context was that the year to date target was 3.59. I'm always suspicious of overly precise targets and performance that's also suspiciously close to the target, but that's a topic for another day. Two data points do not make a trend. We need to stop making comparisons and decisions based on two data points, including actual performance versus the last period, performance versus last year, or performance versus a goal or target. As Dr. Wheeler said in our conversation, three data points generally don't make a trend either. We need charts that show how a process performs over time, and it helps to visualize that as a chart. We just need to react the right way. And there's a typo there. Defects, uh, defects happen. Okay, through the magic of the internet, that typo will be corrected. But the other, another main point here, arbitrary targets can cause a lot of problems. As Deming taught, arbitrary targets that exceed the capabilities of the current process and system will often lead people to fudge the numbers or game the systems to get the results that management demands. See the recent VA waiting time scandals and the Wells Fargo unauthorized account scandal for examples of this. 
a lean culture should shift away from the naming, blaming, and shaming, as it's called in healthcare. But if we don't have that culture yet, we must be careful with how managers and executives react to charts on these boards. Filter out noise to better find signals in the charts. Every data contains signal and noise. If we react to all the noise in the data, overreacting and asking for explanations for every up and down in the data, we, may, we might, I think we will, we do waste a lot of time and frustrate everybody involved, which could lead to the end of lean daily management. Control charts, or what Wheeler calls process behavior charts, it's probably a better name, are the best way to filter out noise so we can make better decisions based on signals. So we use process behavior charts to detect signals and determine if we've really improved. Once you learn the Deming-Wheeler statistical thinking, which is easy to learn in practice, you'll no longer be satisfied when a team shows simple before and after data, you know, two-point data comparison that masks variation, making it impossible to tell if the apparent improvement is signal or noise. Be careful with linear trend lines. Well, I'm, I'm happy to see charts on these boards. People should be careful with their use of linear trend lines, which are incredibly easy to draw in Excel. Linear trend lines can be very sensitive to the last, first and last data points in a series. For example, here's a run chart with a linear trend line in red that suggests performance is improving. A manager might conclude and try to convince their boss that we're getting better and they'd praise their team for this. Recognition is good, of course, but only when it's deserved. Now, notice how there happens to be a very low point, 82% at the start of the chart, and a very high point, 91% at the end. Well, hmm. I mean, if one were trying to be a bit deceptive, selectively choosing your starting and ending points is one way to do that. And you know, please note, I'm not encouraging this sort of behavior. But it made me wonder what would happen if the first and last data points happened to not be in the graph for some reason. It would then look like this. It's the same data, basically, different time frame. Now the linear trend is downward. I think, well, wait, I thought we were improving. I mean, it's troubling, isn't it? Now process behavior charts are better. And that's why it's better to use the process behavior charts. You, you don't run into this trouble with linear trend lines. If, if you're familiar with statistical process control, or SPC, the approach I'll describe here is very similar. It's called the control chart for individuals. When looking at a chart, we need to ask questions such as, are we improving or is performance just fluctuating around an average, which we could call noise? Is the process changing? If so, is it changing continuously or is it more like we have occasional changes that might boost performance as more of a step function instead of being linear? Process behavior charts help us separate signal and noise and help us determine when a process's performance has really improved. To create this chart, we take the time series run chart and add a line for the calculated mean or average. We also calculate natural process limits as Wheeler would call them or what SPC would call upper and lower control limits. We choose basically uh, plus minus three sigma control limits because that's proven to filter out most of the noise in the system. We need to filter out noise because the last thing we want to do is draw the wrong cause and effect relationships between our process improvement actions or attempts and the results. If there had been an improvement attempted, such as a rapid improvement event or a change in staffing levels and assignments in 20, February 2014, we want to determine with statistical validity if that made a difference or not in performance. If the patient satisfaction score is higher, we need to ask if that's a meaningful signal or if it's just noise or fluctuation in the data. The average patient satisfaction score was about 86% over that time frame. The upper limit is calculated to be 92.5%. We, we don't choose this limit as it's what we call the voice of the process. The lower limit is calculated to be 80%. And you can read more and, and find a video tutorial uh, on how this is calculated. You can find that um, on the Kinexus blog, by the way. The process behavior chart and understanding how to interpret it leads me to draw a different conclusion about the data. We see the metric here, it's fluctuating around an average, it's fluctuating within those limits. 
the bad news. Patient satisfaction is not improving. Sorry to be a buzzkill about that. The good news, patient satisfaction is not getting worse. So hooray. All we know is that we have a stable and predictable process that's generating stable and predictable results. The chart is telling us, good news, that we can predict with a high degree of certainty that the July 2015 patient satisfaction scores will fall between about 80% and 92% if we look at the limits here. The bad news might be that our target is 95%. The current system is incapable of hitting that target, so we need to improve the system. We'd have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. In a stable and predictable system, a question such as why was patient satisfaction lower in April compared to March is the wrong question to ask. There is no likely explanation for why April generated different results than March. It was the same system, both months, and there's always variation in the output of a process, and here it's all noise. We could ask, how do we improve the system so it performs better? But that's, again, a different question than asking what went wrong last month. If there had been an intervention in February 2014, I would have to conclude that it was ineffective. We planned, we did, we studied, and based on this view, I'd want to adjust. So going back to the chart, you can see February 2014, it's really just continues the fluctuation. There's nothing in the process behavior chart that we saw there to indicate that performance is better. It appears to be fluctuating around the mean. We have noise in the system. We shouldn't praise people for randomness in the data, and we shouldn't draw the wrong conclusions from our attempts at improvement. If we tried a new intervention, we can use the Western Electric Rules, as they're called, uh, to help us determine if there's a signal amongst that noise. If we saw eight consecutive points above the mean, the process is telling us that something has changed, or it might confirm that our countermeasure was effective. Of course, eight consecutive points below the mean would tell us performance has shifted in the wrong direction, or finding a single data point above the three sigma limit of 92.5% suggests a signal, as that is statistically unlikely to be normal variation or noise. Or, you know, we can simplify things to use uh, just these three rules for finding a signal. Rule one, any data point outside of the limits. Rule two, eight consecutive points on the same side of the central line or average. Rule three, three out of four consecutive data points that are closer to the same limit than they are to the central line or average. The methods Wheeler teaches in understanding variation are easy to understand and they're not difficult to put into practice. I've taught these methods to managers of frontline staff in many health systems. Once a team stops overreacting to every up and down or having to come up with an explanation for every data point that's below average or worse than the, than the target, we free up a lot of time and mental energy for real and sustained improvement. So as it says here in the article, you know, I've been teaching workshops on, um, on this, uh, you know, formal day-long workshops for the last year and a half. I, I've taught these methods in different ways uh, a lot over the last 20 years. I do invite you to check out Don Wheeler's book, Understanding Variation. I hope you'd also take a look at my book, Measures of Success, React Less, Lead Better, and Improve More. It's now available. You can get it in the Amazon Kindle store, Apple iBooks. You can also get it through a service called LeanPub. But if you go to the book's website, measuresofsuccessbook.com, you'll get information about um, all those different ways you can buy. You can also um, sign up to be notified about uh, the paperback edition that uh, I'm working on, and, and hopefully that'll be available later this year. Um, so again, this has been Mark Graben. Thank you for um, checking this out, uh, listening uh, to this video on the topic of your lean daily management approach would be even better with some simple statistical methods. Thanks.